Welcome, welcome, welcome to UX Makeover Week. I'm your host, Alize, and this is day number four. We've been doing lots of makeovers this week. We've got a really fun one for you today. We're doing furniture store homepage. Let's take a look at my screen. We'll see the challenge prompt. I am working in a design file that you have access to. It's just right there in the description below. You'll have a link to this XD file. And you'll see right up front the challenge prompt. So you're establishing a visual hierarchy to highlight featured products and calls to action. So if any of this is like, what are we saying? What's visual hierarchy? No worries. I'm going to break this down for you in a really easy to understand way. This is uh, from Nielsen Norman Group. So NN Group, if you are ever like, I want to understand more about UX principles, methodologies, any everything, they're a great website to check out. So this is from them. So visual hierarchy can be created using color and contrast. This is a fun one. So here, when we're looking at this full story page, what comes, what's bouncing out? What's really noticeable for you here? It's that those pink buttons, right? So this is a color contrast. We're having visual hierarchy. That's what our eyes are paying special attention to. Here we can see icon or sorry, noun project. You might, you might have used this for your icons before. This is contrast. So the contrast between that big white search button against that big black screen, that makes your eyes again, go straight to that search button. There's that visual hierarchy. I can notice that right away. It's also quite big, that also helps. And scale and size. So we want to think about the most important elements being the biggest. So here on this hip camp site, if you guys have ever used hip camp to um, rent campsites, I have um, right here at the front, this top center area, we see this text, find yourself outside nice and large, quite big. So that's the first thing you notice. And then the second thing you notice are these people um, at their campsite, this nice large image. Maybe you're noticing third, this text down below, and then the, the search bar area here, right? So we want to think about having our most important elements being quite large on the screen amongst the other elements. And finally, spacing. So we talked about white space the other day. This is coming up time and time again. So we want to think about emphasizing the most important aspects of our design by giving it more space. So here we can see all the spacing, the nice white space that's used around here, over on the right, on the left. And so it really starts to for, uh, allows for our eyes to focus on the refresh your routine, this whole left-hand side area and the call to action button. So these are three things that we're going to want to focus on today when we are redesigning this furniture site. Okay, so I'm breaking down for you what to do for this UX makeover. If this is like, if you're a beginner, maybe you've not done much UX, you've more done visual design, this is a great intro to get you to start understanding the UX process, which is great for a couple of reasons. Number one, it helps you with your portfolio. So you can create your portfolio pieces and they're going to have a lot more of your process and your design thinking behind it. And this is what hiring managers are looking for. And then secondly, when you're actually in the interview process for UX or product design positions, they want you to do design challenges and you have to do it in maybe one hour or you'll have a take home challenge and you have to do the process in a short period of time. So this is kind of like training for that. Um, first thing that you will want to do is look at the current site and, and start to understand what's working and what's not working well. And so let's take a look at Wayfair. This is the site that I am doing a little mic over for, but you can do any furniture site that needs some UX love, any site that you want. If there's a site that you go on and you're like, oh my gosh, this site is so frustrating. I don't really know what it is I don't like about it, but I don't like it and I want to redo it. Go for it. Um, so Wayfair, right when we land on this page, it's hard to tell what I'm supposed to be paying a special, um, special attention to, right? Everything looks like it's competing for my attention. Lots of colors being used. 
lots of bright, bold colors, lots of imagery. And these all seem to have the same kind of visual hierarchy, all these boxes here, bright blue boxes. So right away, I want to make this a bit more clean for my, um, for my design and think about that visual hierarchy. Then when we start to scroll down, the interesting thing is that they start to use different colors for the calls to action. We have green and then gray. So there's a lot of colors being used. It almost feels like three websites in one. So something I want to think about is making it much more cohesive. All right, dun, 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 dun. here is the makeover site and um, the madeover site that I created for y'all. And the top section right away, it's like a nice image, a bright call to action. And you know right away what you're supposed to look at. Those summer savings. We, wanna, we want you to shop the best outdoor sale of the year. So we have a call to action, big image. Then you can scroll down and see those top rated items. So those are some more secondary on the page, but still important because they're ab above the fold. So above the fold is everything before you start scrolling. And then we see fantastic deals here, nice large images. I also have the credit card that they had a call to action for their on their current site about their credit card. So I applied that here. If you guys were doing the news makeover with me, then you'll notice I kind of use a very similar advertisement type of um, design for this site as I did for the news site. And then I also have another call to action here for the credit card. So it's a little sticky button, get $40 off right there as well. I didn't do the full page. I only gave myself about an hour, hour and a half to work on this. I think if you've got about an hour, work on whatever you can. Don't feel like you need to do the full thing. What we're trying to understand is just the concepts of visual hierarchy. So just do whatever you can in the time that you have. Don't worry about, it's more quantity over quality. Wait, no, that was wrong. It's more quality over quantity. Um, all right. So from here, I looked at competitors. Another part of important part of the design process. I looked at Joss and Maine. I really love their clean design. You can see the influence in my design. I also found this like bomb site called Jungalo. It looks so, I just loved everything about it. Like the colors, the styling, the nice large imagery. I also looked at world market crate and barrel, a ton of them to see what I liked. And then I also looked at Behance for some visual inspiration. So I liked the hero sections of these two. And then from there, I went into my wireframe. So before you get started in XD, make sure you understand the basic structure and the content that you want to have on your screen before you just get into the design file. This helps you to understand more of what you're creating before you kind of get into the tool and maybe you get a little bit lost in the tool and you're just worrying about color. Let's think about general structure first. So here's my little wireframe. It didn't take very long, right? It doesn't take too much time. You could whip something up real quick. And then I found this UI kit um, from Bashar Bouillon. And this um, is the same UI kit I used for the news site as well. So you can see how I'm using a UI kit for multiple types of sites. You don't have to have the same furniture UI kit for a furniture site. You can just find a structure that works for you, some elements, and apply it to your design. Um, you have access to this UI kit. It is over here in this artboard in your design file all the way down if you click on to this link here you'll have access to that ui kit everything here you have access to all these links just make sure you are in the artboard and you are playing that artboard in order to access those links right i've got lots of like beginner tutorials and all that stuff good stuff for you so you can check that out all right let's get designing in XD. So I have here my UI kit. I always make a copy of the kit and I'll have a version over on the right-hand side and I'll be working on the one over here on the left-hand side. And I always have my wireframe right next to it so I can like look back and forth as I go through it. Um, I'm basically gonna start designing just from underneath the navigation um, for time's sake. So here we have a nice large hero. That's what I wanted for my design anyway. And to replace an image in XD, it's one of the easiest things that you can do in XD and one of the most satisfying. And so I'll take any image. So this is one I found from Pexels, P-E-X-E-L-S. 
And I grabbed this image and I'm just dragging and dropping it right into that image. Boom, it's there, yay, and it replaced it. And then I can just drag the corners and place it to where I want it to be. And I can scale it up or down and play around with that. But this works for me so far. And so now again, visual hierarchy, I want this nice large image to be the main thing that you notice and you look at it and you're like, I want an outdoor area just like that. That looks so nice. So that's why I have that up front and center. And then I want to have a call to action that leads the user to the outdoor sale. From here, I'm wanting, I've played around with different things. And so this is why I grabbed my little inspo. I think I mentioned this yesterday, but whenever I'm designing, I just take screenshots of design inspiration or aspects of designs that I like. And I just like place it next to it. And I'm like looking at it as I design. And that gives me that inspo right as I'm designing. So I knew I wanted to do like a rectangle on top, like this image. So I am just going to make a rectangle R for rectangle, place that bad boy in. And over on the right-hand side of my property inspector, I'm gonna get rid of that border and I'm going to make that color the Wayfair purple. And I'm going to just reduce the appearance so you can kind of get a little peekaboo of the background there. And then I'm gonna place this text on top, all of this on top. Now you can see that it's behind that main purple rectangle and it's just because of the layers there. Um, it's if I look in my layers panel, I can see that these two elements, this is below this rectangle as far as the order over here on the left hand side. What I typically do is I'll take this group and I'll take this and I'll actually make it into a group. So it's easier to just handle in my groups area in my layers panel and then I can move them around and so now this group can be on top of that rectangle area and they're also all together when I first got into UX one of the most challenging things in a design file was understanding groups and layers and how they relate to each other once you've gotten that down pat, you're able to get into anyone's design file. You're able to start having more clean design files. And you're able to just maneuver around a lot better. So that would be my number one tip for anyone who's new is to just get like a comfortable with groups and ungrouping and how the layers panel works. Okay, dokie, let's change this to summer savings. And I am going to make this Proxima Nova. I've been just sticking with Proxima Nova this entire week because why not? It's, it's easy to use. It's easy to read and I like it. And then I like to change the spacing between the text sometimes for my big titles. So I'm going to put like, oops, I'm going to put like 80 or 90 and play around with the spacing here get rid of this layer. And then here's my call to action button. And instead of purple on purple, right? We wanna think about color contrast, purple on top of purple is a little hard to read here. So instead of using purple, I am going to select this rectangle and make it white. And then my text will be purple. We'll make that Proxima Nova. And maybe it's like shop, outdoor sale, something like this. And there we have my first call to action button. And we have that nice contrast of the purple and the white, the white being able to stand out on top of that purple. Visual hierarchy, we're doing it, we're using it. All right, so summer savings. And then I have like, I think some other text here, shop the best outdoor sale of the year. I don't know about you guys, but I am like the worst at creating marketing copy. Like shop the best outdoor sale of the year. It always sounds cheesy to me. I don't know how to write anything better, 
Um, but if you are a copywriter, this could be an opera, like, or you're just a writer in general, general, maybe you can have this as an opportunity to think about UX writing as well. So that could be kind of fun. Okay. So, oh, Claudia likes Jungalo rugs. Okay. I have to check out those rugs on Jungalo. <laughs> yeah. I just found that website. Isn't that fun when you're doing a competitive analysis and you're like, this is a great site. I can't wait to use this outside of this experience. All right. I'm just going to delete everything else down below, everything off my UI kit. Goodbye. And taking a look at my wireframe, the next thing I have is a little carousel here with the top rated items. If we look at the original design, they had a couple of top rated items here. So this is top rated, this is top rated. And I wanted to just bring them all together so you can just easily go and see all the top rated items or the top rated categories there. So that's why I decided to put that and drop that down into that section. So um, I am going to actually make a rectangle in the background here. And I decided I, I'm going to use that purple color, but I'm just going to like, that's intense, right? It's like, Ooh, contrast. Now this is competing with this. We don't want that. This is still the main thing. This is the main squeeze. What we want people to pay attention pay special attention to. Secondarily is this section. So I don't want it to compete this hard with each other. So I am going to change this appearance so that it's just like a lighter purple, right? So then now it's like, okay, there's a co this cohesive, but it's not competing. And then I'm just going to get uh, my text tool T for text on my keyboard. And I'm going to put top rated. And I'll just make that black. And what they did is they had those little stars, if you noticed on their screen. So I'm going to use some stars. I'm going to go into my plugins, into icons for design. And I just researched stars. And so I'm going to bring in this little star over. And so it just helps people better understand like, oh, these are five star rated items. And I'm actually going to use the same yellow that they use. So if you want to use a color that you find elsewhere in the wild, whether it's this purple or this yellow, you just use this little eyedropper and you bring it over on that color. And it's going to bring in that color into my little star. There we are. And I'm going to use a feature called repeat grid over on the right hand side of my property inspector. And I'm just going to drag it out. So there's five stars and it's just repeating the same element or the group of elements as many times as I want. And we can do that horizontally or vertically. There we go. We're almost, we're almost there with this carousel. So here I'm going to actually bring in this element. I'm going to copy it, paste it. Get rid of this, get rid of that. And maybe this is like tea kettles or whatever, tea kettle sets. And I'm gonna make this Proxima Nova. So this was Proxima Nova, this title or subtitle, the category title here. It's a 30 font, it's medium. I might make this bold. So we again, think about the visual hierarchy. This is what I want people to pay attention to first before going into this section and reading this text. So that is a 30. This would be maybe something more like a 22 or 24. And maybe this would be a medium font and I can make this black. So I can play around a little bit with the sizing of this. And play around with that just to make sure again, like always wanting to be thinking about from a macro perspective, the visual hierarchy as well as a micro perspective. So just in this section, what's the visual hierarchy here as well. Okay. And then from here, I'm going to use repeat grid and I'm just going to drag this down and we'll, we can have like all our different categories here. And I can replace those images by using another plugin called free stock search. And I'm just going to make sure this layer is selected, this background layer is selected, and then I'm going to replace it. And again, I could just double click to scale it down. 
fit it to where I want it to be here. And you can just continue to go through and change out those images as you see fit. For time's sake, you get how I did it with one, so I'm not going to do it with all. But now we already have the above the fold section done. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. The person's face with tea kettles a little like jarring right now while we're trying to look at it, but you know, we, we gotta, we gotta move on, but here we already have this like top section and we can understand that visual hierarchy here. And then I'm going to move into my next session. Um, the teapot is super cute. I know I want that tea teacups like myself, that little set. I was like, it's so cute. Next session, I, next section, I wanted to have these deals. And originally I designed it with two boxes, kind of similar to Jungalo, but I ended up going with this style um, from Joss and Main. I really liked it. So I'm going to just take three big, I'm going to do a big rectangle. And this is going to be like, put bring in the text layer. I'm just going to copy that. Bring it over here, mattresses. And I'll look for a mattress over in my free stock search or a bed maybe. Maybe I'll do this one, looks cute. And from here, I'm going to take these two items, use that repeat grid. You can see how often I use repeat grid. It just makes your process ton faster. And then you can play around with changing the sizing. So now once I change it in this first one, you'll see that it's changed the sizing amongst these other ones as well. And you can change the spacing too between your elements here. That's why repeat grid is so powerful for you to learn and use even as a beginner because it's easy to use and it still like makes your process that much more faster and it also helps you with your spacing and alignment already and then i'm going to just put a category for this one which was great deals okay so now we've already got that and do, ba, do, ba, do, ba, do. what I'm going to finally um, show you is just like how you can make something sticky on the page. So one thing that I noticed on the main site for Wayfair is they're trying to push their credit card. And we'll, I'll just show you what it looked like on their site. And it was over here on the left-hand side, and it looked just similar to everything else here. It didn't feel like it diff was differentiated amongst it. And so it's not just a regular item that's being sold, but it almost feels like that. And instead, I wanted to change that and make it look more like um, something that was... Um, uh, something that kind of stood out in a different way from everything else in the design. And so I decided to make this little rectangle button with just this text with the call to action to be get $40 off, but I still didn't want it to compete with anything. So it's still, it's not so noticeable, but you can see it every time, every, no matter where you go on the page. And the way that you can do that is you can take any group of elements and over on the right hand side, you can turn on and off fixed position when scrolling. So fixed position when scrolling, if I don't have that on and I play it, it's just going to go up alongside with the content, right? So if I turn it on, it's now frozen with it. So this, these are some things to think about, you know, when you're looking again, just looking at that hero section, what are things that I can do to really rethink the visual hierarchy and think about what's important for this, for the company, as well as for the user when they land on here. And what are other things that I can do um, and other uh, inspiration I can gather from other designs and competitors to rethink this design and make it um, feel like a more fluid experience and a comfortable experience for our users. Um, Voodoo Val is asking which plugin I'm using for my images. I'm using free stock search for XD for that. That's what I always use for my images. 
And it's a great resource for you guys to use as well. When you're ready to start sharing your designs, um, and we really encourage you to do so, you are going to just look in the description down below and there is a link for Discord. It's our community and you can upload your designs. You can give feedback to other people. You can get feedback from mentors and other people within the community. And it's such a great resource for you to start to understand how to, how to improve upon your designs. And um, I really encourage you guys to start to put your designs up there. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed today and learning about visual hierarchy and how to apply that in your UX designs. Can't wait to see your designs in uh, Discord and to uh, hopefully see you guys tomorrow for the final session of UX makeovers. All right. Have a good rest of your day, guys. Bye.